Hello there, Zach. Good to see you again. It's been a while. How you been keeping? Yes, Kamal. Quite well on yourself. Very well, thanks. Very well. It's been a while. Um, welcome, everyone, to uh, Spurs 9501. We're back uh, in tum tumultuous times for, for the Spurs. But we've got Zach here in Canada. I'll come here in uh, Savannah, Georgia, and we are going to really try and work out and understand what, what the hell's been going on with the club. So, Zach, as you know, last week we started up again. We did something on, on what Conte had to say about the team. You heard my take on it, which was 100% behind what Conte said, because I believe everything that the club is brought on at the core. What's, what was your quick take on that? Well, no, I have to agree with you, because he was just saying things that we've been saying for years now, if you think about it. Um, for years now, we've been hearing complaints about Levy. We know he's a masterful tactical um, businessman, but I'm not sure that he has the what's in his heart for the team. So Conte, in all rights, said what he said. And I, you know what? I wish more pe people were able to speak up like that, but you, you can't really risk it with the job on the line all the time. But yeah, there's a few things, especially, um, but my, mostly I'm, um, I've been focusing on the way Conte uses our team. And yeah. even though he's correct in what he's saying, I still feel like it's just not working out for him with us. So basically, Zach, are you saying you want Conte gone? Well, if he's not willing to make the necessary changes in his um, lineup, in his formations, you can't play the exact same formation against every single team and expect a result. They're going to catch on to it. Um, and, and personally, I just don't think the wingback system is working well for us at all right now. Okay. Uh, I we mean, have, we good point you make there, but I mean, one of the things that I would I heard recently, Zach, you'd be interested in, is so where does Conte go from here? 15 million a year. There are no, apparently, Italian clubs that can afford that. They're all in financial trouble. They're all in financial, they don't have that kind of clout. Maybe Barcelona, maybe Real Madrid, but I don't see him going there from here. Which, and that's probably one of the reasons why he hasn't just quit and walked away. Because 15 million pounds a year, that's a lot of money, right? Who's going to pay him that? No, exactly. And with him coming out and talking out against the club that he works for like that, that probably um, makes him not look so good either. But um, I was thinking maybe he could go to the Italian national team. They're kind of in shambles right now. I'm not sure how much they pay, but... It's already um, been as, an, an Italian national coach. Yeah, well, they, they need to make a change again, like right now. And yeah. as I think we do as well. I respect Conte. He's a champion in many, many tournaments and then leagues. Um, he's coached some amazing players over the years. Um, the hype when he came in was just crazy. It was bigger than when Jose R Mourinho came in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just felt like, like we always, we started the season well. Um, yeah. And I just don't know what happened. Um, what I want to ask you though, I mean, you make these points very good. And I, I want to come in on that, but. I mean, we're always going on. Is it because you're getting overexcited because you hear that Nagelsmann's available? Is this what it is? Is this what it's all about? Do you really think another manager is going to make that much difference? But no one, no one has been able to do anything with this team. Well, I, I, an immediate impact is unlikely. Um, the team has their their ways and their mentality now. So I think a new manager, it would still take him the rest of the season for the proper changes to come to fruition. But yeah. um, I feel like even if Conte was to stay, but he needs to just make some adjustments. Um, something that infuriates me the most is um, us having so many defensive players. Nobody is looking forward. If you watch the center of the park with um, like um, Hoiberg or Skip, as soon as they get the ball, they aren't, they turn around, they, they turn and face their defenders. And I'm telling you right now, if I was coach and any one of my players, if we have the ball in their half and then two passes later, our goalie has it subbed off, like you're off. I'm not going to accept the goalie has no part in the outfield play. I don't know what you're doing. Like, 
Well, that's Spurs. Though. That's Spurs right now. I mean, we play. We've gone from playing some of the best football years ago, maybe under Pochettino. We were we were pretty good in the early days. I remember the 2016 season. Um, to playing some of the worst football in the league. Uh, I mean, you know, the days. We, we, we've, I think we've redefined boring football, anti-football, as they call it. Is that because Conte style, or is that just Conte realizing? that this is the best this team's ever going to be able to do because they really aren't there, are they? Well, I'm not sure he's had the uh, ability to bring in the actual players that he wants and thinks that can make the difference. Mm -hmm. Um, And he hasn't attempted to make any switches. Like, he changes uh, who plays where, but he's not changing where they're playing, in a sense, because the lineup is the same. Um, I feel like the if we went four back, one center defensive midfielder, that would be five defenders, and you could have five attackers. That's but don't you think that the players are getting worse? I mean, good players get worse. I mean, what? Let's take our, our, the player that we both seem to despise when he was at Spurs, Ndombele. He's just about to win the Scudetto. He's been scoring goals. He's a number. He's a, one of the first names on the team sheet at Napoli. Um, and, you know, we hated the fact that he played, was playing for us. Why, why is it when they're at Spurs, they are so, so bad, go anywhere else and suddenly they can start playing football again? Can you explain that? It's it's probably because it's, it rains too much in England. <laughs> <laughs> it rains a lot more in Manchester and they know how to play football there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, And I've been thinking about our our loaned out players a little bit and... In my opinion, I don't see any reason why Ndombele or Lo Celso, like maybe Lo Celso has been playing great, but I don't see why they don't deserve another chance. Um, I don't know. They're any better when they come to Spurs. You think they'll change? You think that suddenly they'll become the superstars? They are. Look at Juan Foyt. He would have. He got a World Cup medal. Um, he's um, he's won a European trophy. Um, uh, he would never even got in a first team, never even given a chance. And there we are looking for right backs, left backs. We've had people like, uh, um, oh, I can't remember his name, the guy who's now at Forest. Um, we had the guy from Real Madrid who we sent back, we, we put out on loan. I mean, uh, no, I, I just don't get it. You, do you understand no. what the strategy is? What is the strategy of this club? What is it? Is it Skaga? We bring in Gil. Uh, he runs around like a headless chicken. We don't know what his best position is. We don't know what he does, why he does it, how he does it. So now he's gone somewhere else. Uh, it, it just, it's it, nothing makes and sense. And playing well. And playing well. Of course, because we can't play at Spurs. Nothing makes sense. What is it? If you come to Spurs, you like leave your brain behind? I don't know. It, it, pro- it has to ha- be something to do above the manager. Um, okay. yep. The, clubs, the club say, is a. The club is a business, but um, they need to run it like a football team as well. Like it's a sport. We we it's a competitive sport. A lot of your income is based on performance. Um, and we like since I became a fan uh, twelve years ago, um, the value of the club has quadrupled. Uh, the fan base worldwide seems to have tripled. Um, there's a lot of positivity. Well, I know. I don't know what, I, why do we, why are we supporting it? You know, like oh, I can't, oh, I can't stop been there for years like, longer than you, but anyway, well, exactly. You, exactly. I think so, you, you just basically hit the point that I wanted you to make. And we made the point earlier. I mean, I'm going to take you back to it. And that was, it's more, it's got to be more than the manager. Which brings me to the point, get rid of Conte, bring in Nagel's one, which I know that's what you want, right? Just admit it. And you think that's going to change? These players are suddenly going to find their footballing brains and stop and start playing like a team. Do you? Well, well, uh, maybe a new manager comes in and starts benching starters right away, and the starters are like, "Oh man, like what's going on here?" But also, look what happened when we brought in Pedro Porro. Royale just skyrocketed in quality. So maybe there's just no competition for the players in the squad. We do not have another forward that can compete with Kane for that starting position. Oh, Richarlison I mean, has... Kane perform. I don't worry about Kane. But look at Son. I mean... I know. If that, you could stay in a team and perform like that week in, week out. What other team in the Premier League that wants to win anything would keep you in their team? Answer me that. 
Yeah, I think it's just because he's so well loved. He's got a massive fan base. An entire nation cheers him on for the so club. Basically, we we play with ten but ten players. Then. Well, that's what people would say when Ozil had the ball too on Arsenal. But yeah, but he's retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, who this could just be a, a bad season? Because look, look how he just did. Uh, for season, so drop him, drop him. When we dropped him for a few games, he came back and he played well. So what they do? They go back to the old formula again. And, and when he and when he was coming off the bench, he was scoring goals. Yeah, exactly. So, right. I want to ask so, you then. You know, can you keep not? You're refusing to answer this. I've been asking you twice now. Who do you want as a new manager? Do you want Nagelsmann or not? Um, I would take Nagelsmann. I don't want him necessarily. Why? Um. It's it's just upsetting to see us go through so many managers, um, and going all the way back to when we got rid of Pochettino, I still don't have any idea the thought pattern as to why we got rid of him. We like shortly into a season following one of our most successful seasons, in since I've been watching, so. Uh, it, like I said, it's something above the manager. Like there's someone mm-hmm. making these decisions that are confusing. They aren't working out. A lot of it seems trial and error. Um, okay, but that, 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 that. Hold, hold on, hold on. Man. Do you, who do you want as manager then? I'll well, tell why, you did, to think it. why did I don't Bayern think a manager makes a blind bit of difference? You know why I don't think a blind manager makes a blind bit of difference? Pochettino, fantastic manager, but never won a trophy, couldn't. Goes to Paris, wins trophy. Mourinho wins loads of trophies, comes to Spurs, can't win a trophy. But, uh, Conte, loads of trophies, comes to Spurs, can't win a trophy. Nagelsmann, won trophies, done stuff, comes to Spurs. You finish that sentence. Does he win a trophy? Mike, Does he win anything? Well, you can't picture it, can you? No, you can't, no. So <laughs> but you can still do? hope. 15 million, 20 million, some of the highest paid. Mourinho and Conte were the highest paid managers in the world, right? At Spurs. Highest paid managers in the world. Can't do anything. Well, who's going to come and do anything here? You might as well have had, I don't know, uh, uh, anybody, anybody. You might as well have bloody uh, Harry Rednow come back. I mean, he, he, he do any work. <laughs> I had a dream that uh, Andre Villavoz came back. I was like, well, ah, done. All right. woke up from good. a nightmare there. Uh, but no, you're right. Um, there has to be like the manager makes a little bit of a difference. He's ultimately deciding who's playing, what formation. Um, but if you can't motivate the players, um, or there's something lingering in the gray areas that we don't really see as fans, um, then that needs to be fixed. Like who, who's the catalyst? Like why is, why are we so unsuccessful all the time, even with the best managers? Um, and, and one reason, like there's probably a, a, a multitude, but one thing I like to think about is if you just look at the top teams in our league, you can't include Chelsea in that right now, but like Liverpool, Man City, um, they have a possibility to field two uh, like good lineups. They have players who are challenging um, to play all the time. Like uh, obviously when Mane left, Liverpool kind of fell apart, but they're kind of finding their way a little bit now. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they'll overtake and, us all in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I'll revert back to it. You, you know what? At this point with how much, uh, with what Conte said and what people are saying, yes, I will take, I would like Nagelsmann as a coach because he's a young and he's attacking minded. I think that could make some sort of impact right away. Whether he is given enough power to make any sort of real decisions to enact change is, is uh, I'm not sure because it doesn't seem like Conte or Mourinho or Pochettino were given that. So Again, it well, comes down to. Way, I mean, we're in a situation, right, where Conte made these comments. It's been a, it's been a week. Nothing has happened. He's sitting in Italy on fifteen million a year. He hasn't even turned up to the stadium. And nothing has happened. 
We have a director of football who's been banned for three years from uh, Italy for all sorts of dodgy things. We don't know whether that's going to happen. We've got a a, um, a, a um, chairman who said absolutely nothing, who doesn't, who, who basically completely lost, have no clue what the hell's going on. And that is the state today of Spurs. The only person who expressed that frustration is Conte, and he's already voted with his feet. He's sitting in Italy at home. He's not even at Spurs. What the hell's yeah. going on? we're falling apart it seems yeah uh at the seams and those are the only the external seams what we can see again there's something else happening because like but but why is it that we beat manchester city and but lose to like middlesbrough Lose to uh, Sheffield United. I mean, that is the end. Well, that was the end for me this season yeah. and and, uh, and the way that this team is. All right, final points. I know you've got to go. And uh, um, so, what do you want to happen at Spurs in the next week before the next game? What do you want to happen? What do you want to see? Do you want to see a new manager? Do you want to see Conte given a chance? What? Do, or do you want to see Conte at least get on a plane and come back and face the music? Yeah. So right now, I want to see Conte come back, face the music. Um, and keep going because you you can see him on the sidelines. He's passionate. Uh, he wants to play games. He likes when his team's successful. Um, that's the whole point. And I think he's good at that. Um, but uh, so, yeah, and the next I, I really want him to come back, finish off the season with us. It's crazy to me that we'd get a, a get rid of a, a manager at this time in the year. We're 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 not in a bad spot in the league. Let's be real. Uh, we should feel good that we're still up in the top five or six right now. Um, based on our performances, we got really unlucky getting put out of those cup tournaments. Um, we looked exceptionally flat versus Milan. That was that was the most boring thing I've ever seen from Spurs. Um, but yeah, Conte is a proven manager. <laughs> Maybe uh, he's not a one-season wonder, so he needs time to really utilize uh, the club's um, resources to get players that will work in his system. I just think for the rest of this season, the his system isn't going to work, so we need to make a couple changes and be more aggressive and attacking. Okay. Um, so, well, I yeah, I hope we can. In that is we've got three games um, at the end of April, which is uh, Newcastle, Manchester United, and Liverpool. Um, I think Liverpool, Manchester United, and you cut all all three of those are away, and they're all one after the other. Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get seven points. Seven points. Okay, I was gonna go for four. Oh well, yeah, I was gonna think four if I'm lucky, but that will decide where we end up in the table. That is where it's all gonna matter. But you know, typical Spurs. We're probably going to lose to Bournemouth. We're probably going to lose to Leeds. We're probably going to lose to some of the others, and we'll probably get good results at these places because that's what we do. So we get it in our hands, then we throw it away. Um, it'll give us, it'll give us that last ditch of hope, right? We we miraculously beat these three talented teams, and then lose and then, everybody else, and then, and then lose everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Then then we can just write off the season, obviously, but. Well, thanks, know, it thanks. is what it is. Another depressing day at Tottenham Hotspur for Tottenham Hotspur fans, but I think that we, we're probably going to headline this by saying Conte in, Conte out, Nagelsmann, will he make a difference? I personally think absolutely not. It might make, win a few games, but what difference will it make? Is another manager who's, who will be frustrated, who will be upset, and will be desperately looking for the door, just like Conte is. And once he's got back to Germany, or that's Conte back to Italy, very reluctant to get back on the Ryanair flight, which I don't blame him for. Right, Zach, any famous last words from you? Famous last words? Uh, I'll go along with the Conte in. Um, come on, you Spurs, as always. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, uh, we got time differentials here. Oh, maybe you don't, actually. That's why we're doing this. Um, okay. But anyone watching live or whenever we report this, thanks for watching. Okay. Um, and we can't lose hope. We can't lose hope. We love our team. Um, we've seen plenty of ups and downs. So um, let's just keep our chins up. Let's be strong um, and keep on keeping on. Yep. Thank you, then. And um, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs, baby. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Thanks, everyone.
please click subscribe and view Spurs 9501. We'll be back and we are back. Goodbye. See you Look later. Look forward to it. See you.